Black Duck Revival was designed as and continues to evolve as a place for people to come together, a place for experiential impact. And hopefully a place where people coming from different backgrounds and value systems going all the way in. Feel comfortable emoting together. I'm sure we can find all sorts of things I don't know the answer to. Well save. <laughs> Lots of them. I can make you very comfortable if that's if that's all it takes. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Jonathan Wilkins. I live in central Arkansas. I'm originally from St. Louis, Missouri. That one looks pretty good. I've been in Arkansas now for a little bit over half my life. So, if you wanted, if you just got a couple and you don't want to bust out all this wax, whatever. And I own a waterfowl lodge in the Arkansas Delta called Black Duck Revival. It started life as a small Delta church and I bought it a few years ago. Did a fairly extensive remodel on it. And turned it into a point of lodging for people that are interested in coming to this area to hunt ducks and hunt geese. Also as a point of reference for offering a more holistic idea of what hunting is and what can be incorporated into it and who can be a part of it. Thank you. <laughs> so we hunt, we cook together. We, you know, there's definitely a fellowship aspect. Start it skin side down. We'll let it go for... What I'm hoping to kind of foster here is a welcoming and comfortable place for people. Yeah, sit up, shoulder, take the safety off and shoot. Like there's a, like a basis for empathy for them, right? Especially folks that are new in some way to it. So you're all starting to get in the swing of it, you're kind of figuring out what's happening? You know, like we've been hunting speckle belly geese, like maybe they've never done that before, or maybe they've never waterfowl hunted before, or maybe they're very new to hunting. I've never really hunted before, not to this extent. This was my first real hunting experience. Yeah, trying to move a little bit, you know, and all of that. Well, just like you, I didn't grow up doing this at all. It's really only been yeah a couple of times that I've gone out with meat eater colleagues. So it's not my first, first time, but I'm, I'm definitely a newbie. The speckle belly goose is a species of waterfowl that has always existed and used the Mississippi flyway. You know, traditionally they've kind of evolved to feed in winter in like the coastal marshlands of Louisiana to root around in the mud and the muck there, and eat tubers and invertebrates and whatnot. There's a lot of environmental and agricultural practices that have kind of contributed to there being a especially large concentration of those geese in the last 10 years or so here in East Arkansas. And so there's just a ton, ton, ton of birds. Until kind of very recently, it's not a species that was getting very much attention in the space. So it was a point of access for me. Because I'm coming from a non-traditional background and I don't have the familial connections to land and access that a lot of people might have, you know, it was kind of a niche that I was able to find my way into. We're gonna try and move expeditiously because you can already see the sun's peeking up, yeah. so we wanna get it right. Yeah, let's just start trekking. It was kind of overwhelming, to be honest with you. It was pitch black and we were out there setting up decoys and getting really great instruction, but I just, I didn't know what we were in for. You can see there's like some new growth popping up in here. So they'll be coming in here and eating. Uh... And there were, I don't know, seven other hunters with us. I felt frankly like a fish out of water, which is a great thing, but also kind of intimidating five six foot of distance between each decoy so about that far okay. this will make my 29th year waterfowling uh, my 14th year guiding waterfowl and i've been guiding fishing trips full time for almost 15 years now trying to understand the pattern of setting up the decoys and which geese we were putting where 
how firmly we were sticking everything in the ground so they wouldn't swing around the wrong way. Wind direction. Wind, all of that. We were just thrown in the deep end and I mean that's the best way to learn. Is it to create kind of like a wrist, like a welcoming landing pad? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, they got, so the wind's at our backs. So, you know, you'd think that they would want to come around, cup up, use the wind to slow down right in front. They're going to want to land on the edge, hopefully on the edge of the specs. They're already flying. We got to put these ones out. So what I'm going to do is just kind of set a teardrop perimeter. You just bebop around and put them in the middle someplace. The decoy setup is far more extensive than I realized. I mean, hundreds, right? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Hundreds of decoys we had to adjust based on wind direction, and we had to kind of hustle before the sun started coming up. Rule number one is don't shoot me. I can't stress that one enough. Shoot, shoot the seriously, don't shoot nobody. Be careful all the time. Watch where your barrel's pointed. Make sure your safety stay on until we take a shot. When I call a shot, you can take it off. Don't move, don't move, don't move. I can't stress it enough. Slow movement is still movement. They will pick it off. The boards are made low. It's not for comfort. Center of your skull stays on the crest of that board. Stay below these decoys. Your barrel will be across your lap. Point it down towards your feet. None of this up here. Don't lift your knee up and set your gun on it. Nothing like that because it'll stick up above these decoys. They'll peg it out 100 yards and won't get nowhere near us. So wow. stay down, stay low, wait for me to call the shot. If birds come in low and light on the ground, it's 10 to 2. So if birds land down here, guys on the left don't need to be shooting at them. Birds land over here, guys on the right don't need to be shooting at them over there. Just stay safety conscious at all times. Sit back and enjoy your hunt. Yeah, so what you're going to do is they come in, you get the call to kill. You're gonna sit up, shoulder, take the safety off, and then shoot. Okay. Like that. Get the under there. There's little four packs coming our way. One bird. That first sit up, I was like, oh, I got this. And then 10 other shotguns went off and I was like, what? I was so bad. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> I, just, I like had problems with the shotgun. I wasn't even shouldering the butt of the gun. I was just out here. It was a complete disaster. What'd y'all think? How'd you feel about that? I wasn't ready. It's gonna happen again, don't worry. Kill him. I want people to feel comfortable making mistakes and you know getting instruction that's not judgmental, but that's you know designed to be helpful, and then watching them you know, through their, through their own grit, their own determination and resiliency and vulnerability, be able to accept that information and then put that into practice and find success. So you're all starting to get in the swing of it? You're kind of figuring out I what's I think happening. I'm not flustered anymore. I'm yeah, ready man. now. I like, was get just a little like... bit out of it, it's fine. I'd say like, dude, break it down. So focus on popping up yeah. and getting that gun onto your mm -hmm. shoulder. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then, then, like I said, and when I'm saying pick out a bird, like when they're doing a pterodactyl thing and they're coming right in your yeah. face, right? Pick one out and watch it. Like yeah. watch it all the way in. If it get if it goes over there, then pick another one. But try and have your eye on that, and sit up and keep your eye on that the whole time. When everyone's shooting at the same time, it makes it really hard to to know who shot yeah. what. The the major takeaway for me from that was. I did not absolutely look at one animal and be sure to connect. 
with that bird and drop that bird. If you, if you pull up and he's still sitting there in front of you, just keep shooting until you're out of shield. Yeah. Okay. So don't look up, but just prepare yourself. There's five of them. They're going to end up right in front of you. Chill, chill. Dude, there's two. Oh my God, these two are right in here. Oh, and there's three behind them. Get ready. Get ready. Shoot, 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 shoot until you're out. Shoot until you're out. There were so many birds in the sky. It was like a speck highway. Yeah. I mean, this yeah. way and this way and th I mean, that's what was amazing about it. They were so loud, musical, all across the sky. I mean, it was a sight really to behold, but then trying to pick out the one bird and aim properly and get that one bird instead of, you know, shooting willy-nilly. It was definitely something that, that needed focus. <laughs> to me, hunting, you know, brings to mind a quote unto the whole person. It's such a multifaceted and multi-tiered endeavor. So there's, there's aspects of education involved in it. There's aspects of, you know, science and biology. There's aspects of you know, mechanical fortitude. Because look, there's a lot of mechanics in this. You gotta figure out how to pop up and everything. But once you kind of settle into that, man, it's just, you're just doing, you're doing the same thing people were doing 10,000 years ago when they were throwing an atlatl or something, you know? I think it's a way, for me personally, it's a way for me to be a better and fuller human and be more in touch with this, this lineage of humanity. Tomorrow, because it won't be the first time you ever did it. You know what I mean? And you, you'll understand a little bit more how to wait for the shot. You know, you, you've seen a couple different ways of them wanting to come straight in, then being high up. You can kind of start anticipating it, you know? So it's all a learning experience. What's tripping me up the most is the aim and like taking a second to breathe before pulling the trigger. So I'd say, yeah, I mean, I think you've already started to figure it out. You want to take a second, you know, that half a second it takes you to sit up, shoulder your shotgun, and just feel comfortable with it, and already have that bird you want picked out so you can take your safety off and then shoot as necessary. Right, if you're aiming, kind of you're saying like, for the beak and kind of that, like the head, that front area, if they're coming in that way. You know, if they're coming straight into us, you know, if they're pterodactyl in it right into our face, then we're gonna try and shoot them right in the head. But if they're moving across, you've got to lead them a little bit. So you've got shots right in front, you've got shots above. You've got to control yourself so you're not swinging over on top of people. I mean, there's a lot to think about. Uh, All right, Corinne, let's get off the clay. Yeah, that's a great way to practice. Practicing. I've got stuff to work on. Well, that'll be for the next 50 <laughs> years, all right? <laughs> Since this was your first time hunting geese, it was your first time laying out in a field like that, I mean, what are your takeaways from it? What do you think, what could be adjusted so that you had like a better experience? Um, my shooting skills. <laughs> uh, I think just the simple act of having done it mm -hmm. and had that first experience, I think is going to kind of break down some of those, those barriers of like, just feeling a little like a fish out of water. Yeah, what do I do, yeah. I got stuff to work on and I am motivated to work on it. That's awesome, man. <laughs> Super stoked to try my first goose. Never had a goose before. Yeah, man. This, I mean, this is as good as waterfowl gets. Cool. So yeah, we can cook some stuff up today. It'll be real good. Cool. We got one pellet in them. That one looks pretty good, actually. This is paraffin, this is microcrystalline wax. We're just mixing them together. We're gonna basically dip birds in it, squeegee them off a little bit, stick them in this ice water, it's gonna make you get hard. And then we're gonna pull the skin taut and pull it, and it, I mean, just like you wax your legs or something. Yeah. 
Is there a history to this? It's like an old French method, okay. and then those Cajuns down in Louisiana, they probably do it more than anybody. And then it's just kind of permeated up and around, you know. Okay. All right, so we're gonna pluck just like a thin line up the middle, just for wax access. We're gonna do the same down the back. We're gonna pull these primary feathers out of the tail, and then we're gonna pull these out down to the first joint or thereabouts. Bird goes in the wax like that. All right, hold it over that pot of wax. And we're just kind of do like this little squeegee effect. Stick it in this ice bath. And we're gonna let that sit for like five minutes till that wax totally hardens. And then we'll crack the wax, and rip it off. So when you find those skin tears, try and keep your skin taut. Sometimes you just gotta pull the skin away from the wax. That's the difference between wax plucking and dry plucking. That's why it's worth making the pot of wax. All right, so that's the cloaca right there. We're gonna go right on the other side of it. I turn my knife up so I'm not cutting down into the intestines. I just nick it like that, and I'll do that all the way around. Flip it over and do the same thing to get around that preening gland. And then go in there underneath the intestine, cut through the backbone. The good thing is, is because you're all down here by the bottom, if something does happen and you nick the intestine, you haven't ruined everything. But I really try and cut around it because all that yellow fat in there is good stuff that we want to keep. So then two fingers in. Pull it out. So heart on this is good. It has been heart shot, but it's not too bad. The liver will just trim off the bad parts there. And then when you get on this gizzard, just truthfully for usability, you got two lobes. You can come in here and cut one lobe and then do the same over here. And you will lose just a little bit of that gizzard, but most of it you're fine on. Because the inside of that is what, like sand and... Yeah, so we can open it up if you want to look at it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. And you can hear that. Yeah. You hear how crunchy that is? It's... This is an incredibly tough piece of meat. Oh, See? Yeah. So that's just grit and grime mm -hmm. and everything else. And then all of this yuck goes away. And then you've got a heart, you got your liver, you got your gizzards there. We clean that up and you're good to go. Yeah, I got you. Mm. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> you know what the You guys want to cook hearts over an open oh, yeah. fire? Keep rolling it around. You can kind of tell who likes their marshmallows first. <laughs> Closing the day with um, everyone who participated, you know, coming around together. It's kind of like that full circle. You know, you go out, you successfully 
in some people's cases, <laughs> um, harvest the animal and then you're there sharing the meal together and that satisfaction to eat from the day's work is a beautiful thing. Yeah, and people coming from all different backgrounds and parts of the country and sharing a meal yeah. together uh, was really pretty special. Mm. Mm. Ooh. Oh. Well, it was like, it's like a... Your Hot dog oh. marshmallow. Oh, that tastes <laughs> almost exactly like it was just, yeah. <laughs> delicious. Yeah. Jonathan, what would you say describes like southern food for you or food in this this region? Yeah. Arkansas is the south, but it was kind of like the last southern state that was settled. So the people who settled Arkansas came from other places. So there's not really a a really truly distinctly Arkansas food its interpretations of food from other places. I think it's representative of the place and the people that are involved in it and that are creating it. I think kind of like at its best, it's simple and honest and authentic to what it is at the time. You know, like it's supposed to be nourishing, it's supposed to be sustenance, it's supposed to be shared. You know, it's supposed to be family and community and all that stuff and that's, essentially what I'm trying to create here. If they come in, empty your guns every time. I was like pretty nervous. I felt like I kind of blew it on day one. And then I had one day to learn from my mistakes. I walked into the morning feeling so much more at peace with the experience mm. and feeling like I gotta do this for myself and my progression. Well, get ready. Get ready. Get Pick one out. Pick that one out and shoot it. Shoot, 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 shoot. Well, hey, look, I saw you picked one out. That's good. It's all right, reload, go ahead and reload. No, hey, that's 10 times better than yesterday. You guys are already winners. <laughs> shoot him! Shoot it, pick one, pick one. Shoot it again, shoot it again. That's you, that's all you, yeah. girl. God, dog, you did it. All right. Played over what he said in my head and took a deep breath and shot and did it. <laughs> and the fact that he was right there and had been, you know, along for the ride the whole time and was so, was almost more excited than I was. He was so <laughs> excited That's for you. That's all you, yeah. girl. God, we dog, saw you, you connect. Yeah. with this huge bird. For my success to be his yeah. success was such an incredible feeling. All right, make sure your guns are on safe. I just took one extra second to focus and aim. Look what you just did. <laughs> Big old pretty barred up bird. Way to go. Thank you. I think it motivated you to do the same. <laughs> I kind of thought to myself like, Corinne, this is the last chance you have. <laughs> Try to follow the steps, breathe. Kelly! Sit up. Shoot, shoot, shoot. Yeah! Yeah! Oh, girl! <laughs> that counts, Corinne. Dude, you smoked it, man. I felt a little bit more confident that time. I just tried to follow what I had remembered. Dude. Well, that was all on you, 110%. I mean, it was pretty satisfying. You nailed it. It was kind of mission accomplished, right? <laughs> no, it's a great feeling. That was the improvement and like the, the, the shift in confidence, you know what I mean? And not getting not getting mentally beat down because it wasn't happening in the, you know what I mean? Like you weren't doing exactly how you wanted to, but then figuring out some resiliency, you know what I mean? Wrap it around and put the, yep. 
Perfect. There's a lot of power in being vulnerable and having someone like Jonathan who was also willing to get down on the ground with me and be vulnerable with me and really allowed me to, to grow and, and to see that progression. Seeing someone else be vulnerable and put that out there allows them to gather strength and, and weather whatever it is. And I think this is a way to be a fuller human being and I think that everybody deserves the ability and the opportunity to be the fullest expression of themselves that they are capable of being.